When emergencies happen at schools, part of the response includes safely reuniting children with their parents and guardians. Yeah, we've always seen those videos after like a school shooting, sadly. Parents wondering where my kids are, you know. Yeah, they're standing outside of the school. And where sometimes should we it, meet? It can go on for hours because yeah. you don't know if you can get mm -hmm. in touch with your child or if they're okay. So why, that's why this morning representatives from schools in the state of Delaware are learning what to do after these emergency evacuations. And it's training being given by the I Love You Guys Foundation. The name comes from what Emily Keys texted her parents during a high school shooting in Colorado that took her life, and this was back in 2006. Her parents created the foundation in her honor, and they offer what's considered the gold standard for this type of training. So we want to bring in Dan Rector, emergency management planner of the I Love You Guys Foundation, um, joining us to explain what's going to be happening today to help uh, protect our kids and reunite them with their loved ones. Thank you, Dan, for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. So who all is going to be there? I guess what, what principals, teachers, who else? Yes, we have a good representative uh, from school officials, administrators, principals, teachers. We have emergency management folks from the state of Delaware and then some law enforcement officers. And it's important that they're all here so that we all can understand what's going to happen and we can all um, assist and kind of be on the same team when we're trying to get kids back together with their families. And there's a lot that you have to focus on and try to um, tackle when it comes to situations like this. And a lot of people focus on what goes on during an event such as a shooting, uh, but then there's also the part of after the fact, and that's what you guys are going to focus on, right? Immediately after the fact? Yeah, so our main goal is we're an all-hazards approach. We want to help schools prepare for any type of event where something has gone wrong, whether that's a weather event, a power outage. Uh, and today, specifically, we're talking reunification. So something happened where the schools had to relocate to another location, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a violent event. And once they are at that new location, we want to make sure that they get back to the family members that they're supposed to be back with uh, safely and in an efficient manner. So we're looking at a chart here that's, that's interesting. So you're going to go from when the event happens, like it's a tornado or something like that, or, or sadly we've had shootings. You, you, mm -hmm. you secure, lock down, evacuate, and then shelter. What, what's the, some, what are the differences there from secure and shelter? Yeah, so, so what you're kind of discussing there is the SRP, the Standard Response mm -hmm. Protocol, and that's the all-hazards approach that we're going to take in the immediate aftermath. So a secure is what we have schools go to when there's a threat outside of the school. So it could be a person on the school property that's not supposed to be there. It could be a wild animal. Basically, I like to think of secure as we're securing the perimeter. Think about a castle where we put up the walls. A shelter is when we have, um, let's think of like a weather event or a tornado where we're going to stay where we are, and it's definitely not going to be a violent event it's going to be more of a tornado or something like that and then a lockdown is when there's an active threat inside the school and we're going to kind of secure the doors lock the doors get out of sight so those are kind of the three um, that you were referring to okay. there so and that's at some point in those processes oh, go ahead Yep, and then at some point we're going to evacuate where we're going to move to somewhere else. Depending on, you know, any one of those threats could result in an evacuation. So for today then, when the focus is reunification, sounds like there are three main parts for that when it comes to what principals and, and school officials can do. Yeah, so for reunification, um, we're teaching them, we have different roles, so we have we're teaching them how to greet the parents, how to kind of help them remain calm, how to, we use a card so that they can fill out the information uh, for their student. And then we have a, what we call a checker, which is going to verify that that parent is who they are. We want to verify an ID if possible. And then we're also going to match that ID against the school's emergency contact roster to make sure that the person who's here is allowed to pick up the student. Yeah. And then we kind of guide the parent to a reunification area where they are reunited with their uh, child. Do you have those locations picked out already? Like at Brandywine High School, uh, would you like go to, is there a church? I don't know what's around that school. Would those locations be picked out in advance or does that tip your hand? Um, so it depends on the school district, but we do want them to, to know where they're going to go and plan <clears throat> in advance and have multiple locations. And that's why it's important that we have both emergency management and law enforcement here so yeah. that they can help the schools determine the best plan. Because they, they have to think of things like traffic patterns. Um, so sometimes churches or other large events that police officers are used to getting people in and out of quickly mm -hmm. are great locations for reunification. And this is so important because you mentioned it could be any type of situation, so like a wild animal or the power going out 
out. And so this is part of an initiative, mm -hmm. though, where it won't just be Brandywine High School. You guys want to really expand this. Yeah, so it's, you're gonna get, it could be any school in any district. And the cool thing about Delaware is the, the state emergency level is bringing us in to kind of train in three different locations. So the whole state is gonna adopt this policy. Oh, yeah. And what that does is it, cre it, cre it creates um, neighbors, basically that neighbor helping neighbor attitude. So if one school district is overwhelmed, they can reach out to their neighbor and use their resources because everyone's using the same thing. Yeah, and that's, that's the smart. key. We want everyone to use the same language, the same terminology, and be on the same page with these things. Dan, thanks a lot. What time do you start today? Uh, we start at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Oh, very soon. All right. Thank you for the work that you do. Yeah. Uh, all and right. he mentioned um, of three places. It's going to be Newcastle County, so Brandywine High School, mm -hmm. Kent County, Dover High School, and then Sussex County. It'll be Sussex Academy of Arts and Sciences. Okay.